During the COVID-19 pandemic, we have transitioned to working in new and different environments. Perhaps this has got you wondering, when and where, under what environment, does my brain learn the best? In this mini lecture, we'll explore answers to this question using neuroscience, biochemistry, physiology, and educational literature. We know that when we are learning in a multimodal way, our brain learns better. That is when we speak, write, read, listen, see, touch, hear. We are using multiple senses to experience our learning. Our brain is a lot like our muscles. If we go to the gym and we work out only one muscle group, that muscle group gets big and gets well developed at the expense of other muscle groups. So when we only hear words, when we only see words, we're only developing one region of our brain. When we use multiple senses and we generate generate words, we speak words, we write words, um, and we even build models, we are using more portions of our brain and therefore learning more deeply. When we move, we learn. <laughs> so I have a bouncy ball on, in my office that I sit on and do a lot of moving even when I'm in my office. Um, exercise promotes neurogenesis. For example, brain-derived neurotrophic factor is a trophic factor um, that, that is associated with cognitive improvement and alleviation of depression and anxiety. It's upregulated by exercise. For those of you who want a little bit more sexy-minded understanding of that, there is a factor called beta-hydroxybutyrate that is formed when we exercise, especially when we go out for nice, long workouts. And this actually increases the expression of the brain-derived neurotrophic factor gene um, by alleviating some of the tight packaging that occurs um, and sometimes down-regulates that expression. So brain-derived neurotrophic factor, when we move, we learn. When we practice, we learn. That is, learning is iterative. There is a fractal generator. We're constantly myelated, myelinating. <laughs> We're always forming myelin, forming oligodendrocytes, and we are uh, essentially building a scaffold uh, upon that initial fractal generator and growing our neural networks. And the more elaborately we encode information at the moment of learning, the stronger the memory. This we can think about when we think about what our students are doing in the classroom. If the students are doing the work in the classroom, the students are doing the most learning. If we ourselves are doing the most work, jumping around, writing on the board, um, and showing them things, then we ourselves are doing the most learning. When we get jazzed, we learn. That is, when we have better attention, we have better learning. Higher emotional affect means better attention equals enhanced cognition and better learning. John Medina refers to um, dopamine as the post-it of remembering. So <laughs> the release of this um, neurotransmitter enhances our ability to remember what we have learned. Maya, Maya Angelou may have put it the best. She said, I've learned that people were, will forget what you said. Mm, very important aspect of her quote right there. <laughs> when, we, when we talk at our students, they forget what we say. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. So the more meaning in our learning, the more we remember. If we ask students to solve real authentic problems when they come to class, the more they will remember. So I hope these few tidbits have helped you understand a little bit more about the environments and conditions under which your brain and your student's brain learns the best.